Christ is in our midst. Welcome to the Orthodox Talks channel. My name is Very Reverend Ivan Chandra, and today I'd like to have this talk about the Great Lent. Great Lent is a very special time of the year for every Christian, because during this time we are preparing ourselves to the most important feast of all feasts, to the feast of Christ's resurrection, to Christ's Pascha. Christ's resurrection is the main feast in the Orthodox Church. And from the very beginning, from the very first years of Christian Church, we celebrated it as a very special day. Because this day was so special to us, we wanted to prepare ourselves in a special way, in a way that would help us to realize our need for Christ, that would help us to see what is wrong with us yet and what needs to be fixed, and try to fix it. Try to fix it with, God, with God's help by acquiring the Holy Spirit and trying to achieve something very important, what in the Orthodox Church we call deification. That's how we call our salvation. Now, to be deified, it does not mean to become God, to become God in essence. Of course not. There is only one God in essence, uh, and we worship that God. However, we need to understand that by coming close to God, becoming his followers, by following his commandments, by fulfilling his commandments, we acquire the grace of God that is given to us freely by Him, by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we become godlike. So this very special orthodox understanding of salvation, as deification, of course, requires cleansing of our inner strength, cleansing of our thoughts, of our mind, and to proclaim the truth about Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So, from the very beginning of Christianity, the Christians started preparing themselves for this special day of Christ's resurrection, or Pascha, in a special way. Some of them would fast, and fasting means abstinence from food, complete abstinence from food. Of course, the 40-day fast and the meaning and, and how we fast nowadays is completely different from what the first Christians observed. Nevertheless, the first Christians followed the decisions of the entire church of that time. Same as us, we follow the decisions of the Christ church of our time, or I should say of the ecumenical council's time. So there is no big difference between observing either a day or two of complete fasting, complete abstinence from food, or fasting 40 days with some limitations, with, with taking some food, because this difference was accepted by the church in its entirety. So the decision of the church and the decision of the church in different areas, in, during different centuries, church would accept different rules. The rules that would be followed by the people of that century or of that particular time frame. So how, how did the fasting or this great land start. Uh, of course, the meaning of the word land uh, is somewhat different for, from what we expect today, right? Uh, it was used in the Middle English yet, and it, the meaning was spring. And simply because this fasting period is done during the springtime, the Christians started calling it Lent or Great Land. What is so great about this land? First and foremost, we call this land a great land because it prepares us for the great feast. Secondly, this land is called great land because during this period of time, we do a great job of taking care of our souls, cleaning our mind, accepting God's commandments as our only way in life, and following these commandments. So that's a great job, needs to be done, of course. And thirdly, during this period, we acquire a great amount of God's glory. And the power that we receive from God 
is the one that helps us to fight our own temptations, sinful desires, and so on. If we look back and go straight to the very beginning of Christian church, there was no regulations on fasting. There was no regulations on fasting at all. And some people fasted one day, and I, I'd like to remind you again that fasting means complete abstinence from food. Some people fasted for one day, some people fasted for two days, some went a little bit further, maybe three, seven days. And there were some people who fasted 40 hours before this great celebration of the resurrection of, of Christ, and they ate and drank nothing. However, later on, in the middle of the 3rd century, uh, people kind of started following the same rules. At first, they followed two-day fasting period before the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Later on, they started fasting seven days, the whole week. That's how we got our special week before the celebrating of Pascha, of Jesus Christ. And over the centuries, this period extended to seven weeks before the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in the fifth century, St. Augustine writes already, before we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that there is a 40-day fasting. How it came to pass, we have to say thank, thank you to our monks, at that time, of course, there was no monasteries, but the, the, the life of, of a hermit was just starting. Uh, and probably some of the people that, that went into the desert, they couldn't observe the fast, the so strict fast. And they started eating some food while abstaining from other kinds of food. And this is how slowly, generally, we got into this form of fasting when we abstain from milk, eggs, da dairy products, meat, and all the products that are related to the animals. So now we know that the period that we are calling Great Land was developed gradually, and uh, it did not come into being at once. The church was developing it slowly, and when it came to the realization that, that the absence of certain kind of food would be good enough for every Christian observing fast, then the church stopped making any further decisions on this topic. However, we must note that fasting period or Lenten period is not about food at all. Food is only a tool that is supposed to help us to fight our inner sinful desires, our temptations, our sinful thoughts, get rid of them. It's supposed to help us to discover what's wrong with us, how far we went away from God, and to realize that our will is not strong enough yet to fight those temptations on our own. So the church always reminded the followers of Jesus Christ, the Christians, about the main point of every Christian fasting period. The main point is abstinence for sinful thoughts, sinful desires, and so on. It is not easy to stay away from a sinful thoughts and, and keep silent when somebody goes against you, when somebody tells lies about you. It is not easy. But the Christian determination helps us to stay in that middle, narrow, but straight path of following Jesus Christ. So, mainly, this great land is what for? Is for us to see what is not right with us, what needs to be fixed within us, what temptations, what sinful desires, what sins need to be cleansed from our souls. What great land also offers is the way how to deal with with all that bad stuff that we are filled up with, how to fight it, how to get rid of it. It's not only repentance. It's not only saying, I'm sorry, God, for, for what I've done. I'm really sorry, and I regret doing all those things. But it is also a church's healing that applies to, to the wounds caused by sins to our souls. 
So what are these healings? The Holy Fathers say and teach that during this great land, as soon as we recognize that our free will is not free at all, that we are subjects to sin and we do sin freely, we must come to God and say, Dear Lord, I have nothing on my own. I, I don't even have power to fight those sinful temptations and desires. This is what great land is for, to realize that we need Christ. We need him. We need, we need a savior who would come and help us get rid of all that stuff that, that weighs us down and drags us into the pit of, of sinful desires. We need to go further. As soon as we realize that we need Christ, we need to come to church, come to God and say, Lord, forgive me my sins. I have sinned. Forgive me, Lord. And after that, we have to apply those healing pads that church offers to us. Those healing remedies are also the sacraments of the church. And those healing remedies are delivered by the Holy Spirit himself. That's why we need great land. That's why we need to follow the blueprints that are offered to us by the church in order not only to see that we need Jesus Christ, but to acquire healing, receive healing from God, and be healed once and forever. So this process of healing, of changing our life from a sinful way to, a, to the righteous way, is called the period of great land. And as soon as we approach this beautiful Pascha, the feast of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when we celebrate the victory of the Son of God incarnate over death and over devil and all evil powers, when we celebrate reunion, our reunion with God the Father, when we realize that our human nature has been renewed, that's when we start to enjoy the presence of Jesus Christ. And that's why it is very important for us as Christians to follow the recommendations of the church as much as we can, of course, because if you are ill or, or maybe uh, somebody is pregnant or people with special needs, of course, there is no such thing as strict fast for, for people that can't fast. Of course not. But for those who can, we need to try to do as much as we can during this period of time to renew ourselves, to bring spring into our hearts once again. Spring means the, the renewal of, of, our, of our inner life, of our spiritual life, so that we could enjoy the presence of Jesus Christ, the one who resurrected from the dead and who promised that every believer would resurrect with him as well. Thank you for watching. I hope this video will help you to see why we need Great Land, to feel the need for Great Land, to start the inner change. And if you think that this video would, would, would be good or profitable in a spiritual sense, of course, to somebody from your family or friends, please share this video with them. Also, I'd like to ask you, please register your reactions whether you like it or you dislike it, and leave a comment or two down below in the comment area. Should you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I will try and ask, answer them as soon as they become available. God bless you all. Peace be with you.